hello and welcome to Los Farm. We're already tearing up, chopping some onions. We're doing a canning day today. Adrian is here again, and we are canning some beef and vegetable soup. And we're gonna try making some kimchi, which if you've seen us, you'll know that this is not authentic kimchi. This is us attempting to make kimchi, but we'll take you along for the ride. The first step though is we gotta dice up all these vegetables for our beef and vegetable soup. So we'll show you what we got all chopped up. Okay, for the soup, I cut up a one pound bag of carrots and under this is four diced onions. Make sure you save your carrot peels and onion peels. We're gonna freeze those for making broth with another day. Adrian diced up a bag, so it's a five pound bag of red potatoes. We kept the skin on, you could skin them if you wanted to. And then we're also gonna dice up some green beans to add as well. And we're gonna dice up a couple of tomatoes. We've got about two pounds of stew beef that's simmering or browning in this pot. And we're gonna take that out in just a minute and then we're gonna brown our carrots and onions and probably with a little bit of garlic. And then we also have, um, this is leftover meat from when we made our beef broth. So we used uh, beef bones, that's the meat on it. So we have some leftover meat. We'll combine that all, should make plenty of meat. Obviously are making a humongous pot. And we have our homemade beef broth we made yesterday ready to be added. And I'll link below the recipe for making that homemade beef broth from the beef bones. Our beef has been nice and browned on all sides, so we're going to remove it from the pot and set it aside because now we're going to get some vegetables. We're going to give them a little bit of a head start cooking as well. So I'm going to add some olive oil to the pot and then we're going to add probably about five to six cloves worth of minced garlic. Now you could obviously peel and crush and mince your own garlic, but I'm a little lazy, so we're just using this minced garlic and water from the store. I also had some leftover beef from when we made the beef broth. The soup bones have quite a bit of beef on them, so I've pulled that off and added that to our pile of recently seared beef since it's already fully cooked, and we'll use both of those in our soup. We're gonna dump in our carrots and our onions now, mix it in with the garlic, and give it a few minutes head start on cooking. And then we're going to dump in our giant pot of beef broth after we've gotten those onions a little bit translucent. And to the beef broth, we're gonna add a whole bunch of vegetables. We've got diced potatoes, we've got some tomatoes, we've got green beans, we add in our beef. We're also gonna add some frozen peas and some spices. I'm gonna use some thyme and some oregano and some basil. I also realized I had some frozen corn in the freezer, so with that, well, we put that in the soup too. You can pretty much use any kind of vegetables you like. And then we're gonna add some canning salt to taste. Try to use canning salt, or at least non-iodized salt, since we're going to be canning this. While we wait for that to come to a boil, we're gonna go ahead and get the kids some lunch. No, All right, we're trying some locally harvested ground cherries. Well, they're 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 like tastes like a grape? Yeah, I'm gonna try one. We have these outside. I just never picked them oh, before. Wait. So, but we were aftertaste. These ones, these are the wild ones. They taste a little, what? a little different. They taste better different. Try them. Oh, these are great. These are the ones I have. You gonna try one? I don't have space. No, I don't. Have to go. I don't have to do that. Let's do a I like my. Are you ready for some bites? All right, go sit at the picnic table. Josie, you want cheese? Okay, while we're waiting for the soup to hit a boil, we're gonna work on the kimchi. So we've got four heads, is that right? Mm -hmm. Of Napa cabbage? Yeah, four one pound heads. And it, last night I chopped it all up and put it in salt water overnight, of room temp. Room temp, and it smells Not so awesome. <laughs> And so now we, we're draining it and we'll work on the rest of the recipe. Okay, it's time to make some kimchi, which I've never done before. This is a new one for us. So we have an onion here. The recipe actually calls for shallots, but I'm just gonna sub a really finely diced onion, which will be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and get that diced up into fine strips and little pieces. And then we're also gonna dice up some radishes and some carrots. And I think uh, just add the cabbage we already had soaked in the brine. And those are all the vegetables that we're going to use for this recipe. 
Next up, Adrian's going to make the spice slurry that's gonna get rubbed all over the cabbage. So we're making a double batch. So we have four pounds of Napa cabbage, and then we're going to add 12 cloves worth of garlic, and we're putting this in a food processor that's kind of hiding behind that jar there. You'll see it in a minute, but she's putting in 12 cloves of garlic, and we didn't have quite enough fresh cloves, so we're gonna supplement with the minced garlic once we get all that garlic peeled and see how much more we need. We're going to add just a little bit of that onion, just a couple pieces of it. And we are going to add some fish sauce as well. So four tablespoons of fish sauce. It smells just like you think it would smell. We're gonna add four teaspoons of sugar. You could also use honey if you didn't wanna use white sugar, that would be fine too. And we have added about 10 tablespoons of Korean red style pepper flakes. I had to order these special online to find them. And then we also need some fresh ginger. I had already had it pre-sliced in the fridge. You don't have to peel it, it just has to be sliced. So we added about 10 discs of finely sliced ginger, and then we put it in the food processor and mix it all up until it's a nice, just gooey looking slurry. It looks like that, looks great. Then we are going to mix it in with the cabbage. So we add our veggies that we sliced real thin and then we scoop as much of that sauce slurry in there. We try to mix it with tongs. It doesn't work real well. So out come the food service gloves and we're just gonna kind of massage it in with our hands. And then we're going to pack it in these clean jars here. We're using quartz today. We're gonna pack it pretty tightly. We're gonna use our Mason Tops ferment kit. And then I'm going to add a raw leaf of cabbage on top to help press it down. This was recommended in the recipe, so we're just gonna follow, and then we put our weights on from the ferment kit, and we're going to add just enough leftover brine to cover the vegetables. And then on go the pickling pipes and the bands. These will sit on the counter for three to five days, then go in the fridge. Here we go. Okay, our soup is ready, so we just brought it to a boil. It's okay that the veggies aren't cooked all the way through because they're gonna cook in the canner. Because this product has meat in it, it's gonna be 75 minutes for pints, 90 minutes for quarts. I think we're gonna do pints today. We like pints, Adrian loves pints because she can just take the jar to work with her and heat it up and it's ready to go, which is great. So uh, there's really no special canning instructions. You don't have to debubble these because it's already cooking in the broth so air doesn't really get trapped. So. Our jars have been washed and they have been kept in the oven to keep them warm. Our lids have been washed and they're just in a bowl of warm water right here just to keep them warm, to keep those seals soft. Um, always fill warm jars, otherwise one of them might crack and explode on you and you can get hurt. So uh, let's, let's fill up with some soup. we have really hard water adding vinegar to your canner can help prevent that but usually what I do is just when we're 100% cooled down 24 hours later I'll remove the rings and I'll give each jar a gentle wipe down with a cloth and that way you don't have all the hard water residue on there 
thanks for watching. Thank you to Adrian for being our guest star on the show today. And for all of the children. We will catch you guys next time.